In the last years, uh, the possibility to use uh, the new um, technology to analyze the sequence of uh, DNA uh, is providing us with a um, totally new uh, perspective of the genetic alterations that might be underlying the pathogenesis, the progression of this disease. Uh, this morning I was presenting uh, a summary of uh, the studies that have been performed on large-scale genomic analysis in, in CLL and also the perspectives uh, of uh, these new knowledge um, um, be, uh, uh, when we translate it into the clinics uh, and also a review which uh, could be the approaches, the technologies that we could use in the clinical practice to, to use this knowledge and the challenges that uh, the new perspective is providing uh, to understand the disease. I summarize uh, the two major uh, whole genome, whole exome uh, analysis of the disease that were published um, a couple of years ago by our group and the group in, in the US and uh, all together uh, provide the information of more than 1,000, uh, the genomes of more than 1,000 uh, CLL patients. Uh, they, they have been very useful to uncover the whole mutational landscape of this disease. However, uh, the results show the tremendous heterogeneity of, uh, genetically of uh, the CLL, and now we we have to uh, refine this data to see which of this uh, information can be applied. Uh, I discussed this morning that uh, it's not uh, still clear if uh, the, the, the global analysis of the genomes will be the way to go into the clinics or on the other hand we might use a selected uh, number of genes uh, study at uh, a deeper uh, with deeper intensity, deeper coverage, uh, to, uh, to understand uh, what we call the heterogeneous subclonality of these tumors. Because we start to think that the small clones with certain mutations might be important uh, in the outcome of the patient. So that might be um, a need for the clinical practice to, to go deep into the tumors and and detect mutations in very small subpopulations of cells, and that requires different technologies.